Good morning. I promise you by the time you go to leave today, it will be cool in here. I want to say uh, just a little note for those who are listening online. Um, one of our tablets is in for repair, so obviously you'll discover that you can't watch it live, but it will be on YouTube later in the day. So uh, just a note for our online listeners. I'm going to invite the praise team to come forward. Let's stand together as we do our call to worship. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God and King. Gracious and powerful is He, is the God of all creation. In reverent awe, we gather to praise our God. The Lord our God is King, and the forgiving God, fairness and justice are names of our God. In reverent awe, we gather to worship God, within the light of God's holiness, justice, mercy, and love. Holy, 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 God in three persons, blessed Trinity.
will stand in the presence of a holy God. The Lord, as I think in the scripture, around the throne, the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, are you, Lord? Would you just cast out your presence upon us? Holy Spirit, come into our lives and just clear away the cobwebs and the sorrow and the busyness of our week. And we may be filled with you, filled with joy, and be able to hear your word as it's proclaimed as we sit together. These things we ask and pray in the precious name of our Lord and Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Scripture, you may be seated. Sorry.
it shall be signed with the Miskali Bay. At the park, right? And that was to keep in your Bibles, right? And you got Bibles? Today, I want us to put on a thinking cap. Miss Donna and Miss Patty and Miss Marion were your teachers this year at Sunday school, right? Okay. Can somebody think of someone who was patient with you? Um, three of them? Yeah. Miss, Mar oh, Miss Donna. So we think Miss Donna is patient. Okay. I'm sorry. And Miss Patty is always patient. You know what? She is. Yeah. So there's a pardon? Your family? Your, your family was, uh, your family would be uh, good and faithful, right? And patient. Every week there's always a chance to be good. And I thought since our Sunday school teachers gave us bookmarks last week, we could give our Sunday school teachers bookmarks this week. And the bookmark says, she, talking about a godly woman, is clothed with strength and dignity. And dignity means that you're upright before God, right? That, that you're dignified. So I've got three of them. So if you two want to take this back to Miss Patty, and then come back for a minute. You can take it back to Miss Patty, take it up. Do you want to go and take, you two can take that to, you can go take it to Miss Donna. You two can take it together. Maybe say thank you. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to let Frankie hold that up with you. Who's that going to? Oh, Miss Marion, honey. Jeffrey? Jeffrey? Miss Marion. Over here. Marion, there you go. And this summer, what's different about this summer? This summer, we take a break from Sunday school, right? Like we take a break from school. And how many are getting ready to go to camp? Are you going to soccer camp? To Brock University. To, yeah, soccer, right? Yeah, so everybody's going to go away to camp. Yes, Jennifer? You're going for sleepover? No, sleepover. Oh, it's for one baby. Oh, you're going to see bees. Is that what you're going to Okay. Yeah. Oh, see bees, of course. We're going to watch this. Okay, you know what? Let's talk to God. But, just, okay. This summer, your pew packs, don't forget to put them up on your way in. And if you haven't put up, it's on the back table. Because for the summer, our table's not there. You're going to sit with your parents, right? So the table was there when we have goodies and treats, but we're not having those this summer. You know what? I think we should have said thank you to Miss Monica too, right? She got all those snacks ready every week for us. Was that very kind of her? So Miss Monica, on behalf of us all, thank you. Can we shut our eyes and we're going to talk to God? That's right. Let's talk to God. Dear Jesus, thank you for our summer break. Will you keep us safe and help us to be patient, kind, and good? Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you. Good listening. Your parents are over there, Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. There we go. Is it wrong that take the long way home? Can I just slip through my head? I don't think so. Small. This morning we have the privilege of uh, partaking in communion. If you're visiting, by all means, the table is not ours, but the table of the Lord. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
scripture says, and we believe that you're welcome. So let's remain seated as we sing the first verse of Amazing Love.
Christ's body broken for us, but to eat in remembrance of him. Scripture goes on to say that in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We'll now be led in the prayer of thanksgiving for Christ's blood shed for us. Our Father, as a group of believers here on Queen Street in St. Catharines, we thank you for what was done for us so many years ago. Help us to remember, and may it not be a, a routine, but something that we remember each time and are thankful for. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Our scripture passage for today, there are two passages, and they are from the English Standard Version. The first of them is Galatians chapter 5, verses 23 to 26. I'm really starting to read at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep step with the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And the second is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Would you stand as we sing together from everlasting?
thank you that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. That our days are so numbered, and you satisfy us in them. So Lord, we just uh, lift to you our nation. Thank you, Lord, for our Prime Minister. I ask that you be with him as he governs this country. Be with the Cabinet, Parliament. Be with Matt, our Mayor, and uh, the councillors of our city. Be with all those in leadership you can. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in the states who have just celebrated Independence Day. And Lord, we're reminded that we need to pray for one another. So we just pray for their leadership. We pray uh, for the upcoming election. That Lord, the wisdom of your plan prevail through it all. We pray for those, Lord God, who are on holidays. Thank you that they're getting time away and that they may be rested. And Father, I just pray that every day you give us those Sabbath rests, those moments that we stop and realize that all our days are in your hands. And Father, I just ask that you be with those who are in the path of the hurricane this week. We especially think of Dawn. We think of Melsa and Monica and family, Lilla. Uh, family, Lord, their family is our family. And we just pray your hedge of protection upon them as the uh, island begins to clear up and clean out, Lord, your protection on each person. And your, your encouragement, Lord, where there seems to be no way, why, Lord, now, Lord, how come? Lord, I just pray that you fill that with the fact that they are safe and that their days are in your hand. I pray for our shut-ins, Lord, that this summer you be an encouragement to them. Lord, help us to pick up the phone and just call someone we haven't seen, or help us go and visit somebody that needs visiting. Lord, help us to be your hands and your feet extended to a lost and a lonely and a hurting world. And Lord, as you gathered your disciples together to pray, you taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Just before we dive deeper into God's Word, we'll sing ancient words.
Father, we thank you for your rich words. We just pray now, Lord God, as we dive deeper into them, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, we began a series on the fruit of the Spirit. And in the natural, we know fruit coming from Niagara, being in Niagara, we know fruit is good for you. Although the fruit of the Spirit is also good for you. And it's good for all areas of our life. I believe it keeps us in check. And it keeps us thinking about the fruit that God wants us to bear. And for the purpose of the series, we broke it into three different sections. But in reality, as we heard him read, it's a package deal. There's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Last week, we looked at the inward fruit of love, joy, and peace. And the second set of fruit are outward fruit of patience, kindness, and goodness. So for the fourth fruit we look at is patience. I believe that patience is foundational to our relationships. And sometimes, I think for all of us, patience doesn't come easy. It's developed throughout our life. But Ephesians 4, 1 and 2 says, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humanity and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another. There will always be someone or something in your life that requires your patience. And it requires just a little bit more love than you thought you had to give. It's been in my experience is the times when we need a little more to give, that's when the Lord shows up. And he gives us that extra dose of patience and that extra dose of love. Last week we heard from the love passage read at many weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind. So when Paul says in Galatians, patience, kindness, goodness, it's woven throughout Scripture as we've heard it in Ephesians and as we've heard it in 1 Corinthians 13. When I was the age of our Sunday school children, there were CDs. Remember, we don't have CD players even anymore. But there were CDs. And there was a, what I called the music machine. And I'm going to be honest with you, even in university, when I was studying for exams, I put this uh, music machine on. It was about a gentleman, actually it was a conductor, who was conducting the music machine that looked like a train. And as he put fruit into the machine, a song would come out. And the song for patience was sung by Herbert the Snail. So if you just imagine as I sing it that it's being sung by a snail that's creeping along. Herbert, Herbert sang, have patience. Have patience, don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you'll always start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient to anything. Go all the times when others have to wait for you. And then Herbert would go off. Patience is something that we deal with. I think, yeah, as I said, we deal with it, I believe, on a daily basis. And you noticed I used the English Standard Version this week. I'm going back and forth, and in your scripture reading uh, insert, you'll notice that I've gone from the NIV to the King James and from the English Version, just to get the bigger, the richer, fuller picture. So the King James Version of the word patience is long-suffering. And the NIV, for patience is forbearance. See, sometimes, I think long-suffering is probably a better word for patience. Because while we're tempted to be patient, it feels like we have to be patient forever. James also talks about patience. James 1, 2, 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. 
For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. May be perfect. The NIV says, may be mature. You see, maturity doesn't occur just because we get older. There's a lot of older people that aren't quite mature. But as we have patience, as we, the fruit of the Spirit are manifested in our life, that's when the maturity or the perfection comes that Paul's talking about. Patience is always so in our face that we'll always be more. James 5, 7 to 9. And there's something about a farmer for me, I think, as I served rurally for most of my ministries. But James 5, verse 7 to 9, talks about the coming of the Lord and parallels that to the farmer waiting for the harvest. James wrote, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops, patiently waiting for autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, so you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. See, patience, be patient in the coming of the Lord. Be patient in receiving the fruit that has been sown. Be patient and don't grumble against one another. And it's not ours to judge. For in, the, in that, the Lord will be your judge. Remember back in Ephesians, be completely humble and gentle. This morning, as fruit bearers, you can live humbly and gently in your day-to-day -day lives. For out of that will be the abundance of opportunities to be patient. The fifth fruit we look at is kindness. I believe kindness is foundational to how we ourselves are left feeling after interaction with someone. In some situations, we wish we had just been a little more kind. You know, we know we've blown. We really wish that someone may have shown us a little more kindness. People may not remember the words you speak to them in their time of need or in a time of conflict, but people will remember how you made them feel. I think of a dear lady who was uh, one of the visitors at the Neighborlink Fountain, which was a Christian community center in our prior. She lived way up in the mountain, didn't see anybody all week, but once a week she'd come into our prior. And uh, we had the local churches put on lunch for five days a week. Her name was Karen. And Karen would come in every week. She would sit down, it was, it was funny. She'd sit down and she'd just start going like this. We'd say, Karen, what's going on? And she would say, you guys, you guys are just all so kind to me. You are just so kind. And I think of Karen when I walk into a room. Maybe you need to be the one who is just so kind. Or maybe you need to be receiving kindness this morning. How important is kindness? It's recorded in Scripture 726 times. And in the King James Version, kindness is interpreted as gentleness. I kind of like that. For, for being kind to someone, it's usually being kind and gentle, or kind and compassionate. Many years ago now, it was 1990, uh, I sang at my father's funeral. And it was, the song that I sang was called Your Kindness. My father didn't have the easiest childhood, but he did have a loving Heavenly Father who called him back to his side. So it was determined that I would sing, and the words are, it's your kindness that leads us to repentance, O Lord, knowing that you love us, knowing that is truth. If God is for us, who'll be against us? He gave us everything, even his only son. And then I think of the uh, scripture that we read together before the sermon last week in Psalm 117 verse 2. 
wrought for great is his steadfast love towards us. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. You see, kindness is loving people more than they deserve. It's showing people kindness that far outweighs anything they've ever done to us. I think of the illustration of a young child walking along the beach and there was an old man with his cane and he'd reach down and he'd pick up a starfish and he'd throw it back in the ocean. Of course the kid thinking he knew what knew more than the older gentleman said, excuse me sir, why, why throw that into the sea? Why throw it into the ocean? Look at all of them. You'll never get them all back. And in a gentle voice the older man said, son, they may not go back to the ocean, but to that one, they made the world of difference. You've heard it said, actions speak louder than words. We all have a challenge. One act of kindness will teach more of God's love than a thousand sermons. Have you ever heard of, I don't know if it was just us in our prior, or whether it was across Canada, but have you ever heard of random acts of kindness? Just to be challenged to do random acts of kindness. A few years ago, back pre-COVID days, there's a group called Acts, our prior uh, churches together serving. And each one of us challenged our congregation on a certain day to do a random act of kindness. It was fun how that played out. Some paid for the car behind them in the drive through some made meals and dropped them off anonymously. Some cut a senior's lawn and the person was out. And some shopped for a mother in need. The opportunities that people took that day were so creative. They were random acts lived out. They were examples of Christ's kindness in a world that needs it most. The newspaper carried the story, and for quite a few years, we, as the Church of Our Prior, set aside one day to do just that. Julia Carney wrote a children's hymn in 1845. It was entitled, Little Things. The first two verses were, Little drops of water, little grains of sand, make the mighty ocean and its beauteous land. Little deeds of kindness, Little words of love make our earth as Eden in life the heavens above. You see, kindness is love in action. And I believe it is those random acts, it's those little things that show from the mountaintop. That's what we're doing. We're showing God's love. Philip Keller wrote, kindness involves finding ways to brighten and cheer the lives of others. As someone else wrote, caring enough about others that we treat them with gentleness, graciousness, and generosity. Guys, King James Version says in Proverbs 19.22 that the desire of a man is his, his kindness. And women, Proverbs 31, the measure of a godly woman, says that she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness on her tongue. This morning is fruit bearers. Are you living a life that knows his loving kindness? And are you prepared to share that kindness with others? The last fruit that we look at this morning is goodness. Again, I believe it's foundational as are all the fruit of the Spirit, but it's foundational to our relationship. Goodness is doing the right thing for the right reason. We can do something that may be done. But if we do it out of a heart of goodness, that's how it will be received. Matthew 12, 35 says, the good person out of his good treasures brings forth good. I've used this before, but when I was in Bible college, we used to have a, a saying, giggle, G-I-G-O, in a garbage in, garbage out. See your relationship with one another? What you put into your spirit is what will flow. And it will either be good or it will be evil. For what you allow in, that will overflow. 
It's been said that people will discover who we are as Christians, not by sitting back and poring over carefully prepared constitutions. They're important, but rather the first thing most do is watch and wait. They wait to see if we're speaking about love and how we treat each other. They wait to see if we're speaking of forgiveness. Do we hold grudges? They wait to see how we're speaking of acceptance and do we accept newcomers. They speak of God and they watch to see if God makes a difference in our lives. And they speak of caring and they watch to see how we deal with the weak and the disadvantaged of society. Actions speak louder than words. We've all heard that. Are your actions this morning reflecting the goodness of God? You may be able to fool yourself, but it's a lot harder to fool those around you, those you live with, those you worship with each week. This is a very old saying, but maybe you've heard it said, if the well has dirty water, painting the pump will not help. Has anybody heard that? Think about it. If the well has dirty water, painting the pump will not help. So your challenge is day by day, moment by moment, to turn back to the Lord again and again, to develop the goodness that comes from within. One of my life verses is Philippians 1.6. Paul wrote, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. It's Jesus that started that good work. And it's about us being in the palm of his hand until he comes again. John Wesley wrote, Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you can, do good. Our closing worship chorus this morning is becoming my fast favorite. It's called The Goodness of God. The chorus and the bridge that lead to the song. I think sometimes when we're singing stuff, we don't really hear the words. I want us to hear it. The author wrote, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. With my life laid down, I surrender now and give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. I pray that you're able to feel the patience, the kindness, and the goodness of the Lord. He gives it, waiting for you to receive it. And just know that God has his best. He began that good work. He'll be faithful to complete it. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray this week that you give us patience and kindness and goodness to give to others. But Lord, I just pray for each person that they receive those attributes, those fruits from others. And thank you, Lord, that you've called us as a family of God to bear that fruit together, to bear that fruit for you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing the goodness of the Lord.